Over the last six to eight weeks or so, you've seen me take on the topic of getting wealthy. I do think it is a ridiculously simple process. Create dry powder, become a lead at something, and then just simply time. It takes 10 years of constant feedback loops and, and execution to get there. I thought we should talk about why does it take 10 years? And to do this, I have what we call the three amigos, Dion and Matt, uh, to have this discussion. Matt, we'll go to you first this time. Why, do you, wh why does it take 10 years to get wealthy? You got a lot of mistakes to make in the beginning. <laughs> You've got to, so the, what I found in my journey and the reason it took me longer than 10 years was because I had to survive the 08 great recession for four years. And so we were more like 12, 12, 13, 14 before it really started to roll. But I think that um, the, the biggest issue in the beginning is capital, you know, getting your first one and then getting it seasoned and then getting systems in place. And then you only have systems and processes. Everything is still new unless you're smart and you buy all three of our courses for less than 2000 yeah. bucks. Um, you know, people should be smarter than that. And I think that so you get that first one, but that's a year, that's 18 months. And then you're still trying to figure out the market and really learning the next thing and creating the de deposit. Like how often Dion and I hear, like we do some live streams together on Fridays and how often we hear, Hey, so uh, how do I, what's the best way to get more money to do the next one? That's the thing that's the most often asked. And the challenge is, is that you don't start talking private money lenders in your first three or four or five years, almost ever. That's like a really kind of elite st strategy using third, you know, and they want to see track records, especially now, you know, I had uh, someone that I was talking to and they were trying to do every project they looked at. They were trying to do it with hard money. Yeah. And they were just like, I, I can barely, I can't even really get a call back. And I go, you're brand new. Like there's, there's a high confidence that they're going to be taking that, asset back and they're not going to back you a hundred percent because they don't want that asset back. They want right. their money. They want their money. Yeah. Yeah. So the I think the reason it takes 10 years is because one of the biggest challenges is trying to create the capital that you need to go from one to the next to the next, which is why my four, three, two, one house hacking strategy works so well. Oh, exactly. Yeah. House hacking. It's a great way to start. Uh, Dion. So why does it, why do you think it takes 10 years? I think it's because of two things. The first is we have two financial lives. We, as we get out on our own, leave our parents' house, we, we start to figure out how the world works before we figure out how money works. A lot of people rack up college loan debt, credit card debt, car debt, buy more house than they need. And then one day, and not everybody hits this. There are some people, that's their only money life. Right. And they they die in debt. They, they work until they're in their 70s. But for people that want to reach financial freedom, it's like our second financial life wakes up and starts the day we realize we have a financial life mm. that we need to pay attention to and have a plan for and educate ourselves on. And so the amount of things that you do wrong, those mistakes that Matt talks about, you're going to make those mistakes when you start investing. A lot of us make mistakes before we even think about money. Great. For me, it was not paying attention to finances, letting my spouse handle it, ending up in that situation after the divorce of, oh, hey, look, here's $313,000 in debt that I needed to negotiate down to $89,000 that I ended up paying back. That was a delayer in the 10 years to get me going, right? So yeah. how bad did you mess up first? How much student loans do you have in a field that didn't increase your income? If the student loan debt in, you know, doubled or tripled your income, okay, fine. It wasn't a mistake. Sure. But for most people that have a college degree that I hired for $12 an hour office jobs, uh, there's some recovery time there that you need to make. How many kids did you have before 25, before you had the financial ability to have that those kids, um, to have the energy to put into what it's going to take to grow your net worth, right? And, and that was me too. My kids, I, my first kid, I was uh, 18 when he was born, right? So you start young and that makes it an added challenge to it. So the second thing is once you have that start of your second financial life, it's compound interest, right? But it's not... Put it in the stock market, wait for the compounding interest to kick in. It's Matt talked about, they want to see, um, they want you to be seasoned, right? You need rental income on tax returns before some lenders will look at it. You want to have it stabilized. So you have to have the repairs done, tenant in place, cash flow coming in. And then 
as it goes, that compound interest is you have one or two rentals producing more cash flow. Well, that's not a big jump. It's necessary. And it's that thing we talked about last time where people want to replace their entire income. You're not going to do that in one or two swoops. You need several little steps to replace your income. So that's where those first several years go before the, the income snowball kicks in of you have so many different assets producing money to help you get to financial freedom that it compounds over those years. An example is um, Mark Ashiro, the financial firefighter in Hawaii, empties out his retirement accounts, buys 14 rentals in, in like less than two years that aren't stabilized, that aren't seasoned, went through several evictions in the middle of winter at the same time where he had a lot of rehabs going on. And so there's a, this big struggle at the beginning that he talks about often of, I wish I'd started a little slower, added a little more time to it and, and, and let it season and stabilize to, to be more stable as, a, as he's doing this with a you know five to 10 year plan instead of like we hear often in not only live streams, but in uh, emails that come in with questions of, I'm, I'm just starting investing now. I have a two year plan. I need to never work again in my life. How do I do that? Yeah. Lottery tickets. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, for me, again, I, I think all of this is right. Lots of mistakes. Again, you need the compounding thing. I, I'll just take it slightly different because I can. Um, inflation is a feature, not a bug. And if you really understand what inflation is, again, it's it's how we're going to get all this debt behind us. It's it's a feature, not a bug. I know a lot of people want to treat it as a bug. I would argue 9.1 was a bug, right? It's, it's too high. They're happy at 2%. I would argue they're probably happy at two and a half. But again, when you when you own fixed rate debt, which is what you get with one rental at a time, you have an asset that goes up two and a half percent with inflation. You get re that's that's you know the real amount. Nominal is usually one percent back to the 70s. So that's three and a half. If you own an asset for 10 years that has three and a half percent compounding inflation. That's good in case you don't know, because again, you have likely borrowed 20 percent. So you're getting all the equity increase on one fifth of the, the value. That's good. And oh, by the way, your, your costs are fixed, the mortgage payment. Now, taxes and insurance sure could go up, but the largest is principal and interest. That is fixed if you do it right. And again, rent goes up three, two and a half, three percent a year. So again, we're talking in a decade, rents are up. I don't know, 50% when you compound it, values are up 40 to 50% when you compound it. That is when you can start letting inflation be your friend. I have this shirt that I created in 2020 once we shut the country down that says, I use inflation to get rich. Ask me how, right? The second day of the California lockdown, I have a video, I have receipts saying, I know exactly what's going to happen. They're going to print all this freaking money. Inflation is going to go nuts. You know, go buy assets. And we were right, unlike the crash bros. Uh, we were remarkably wrong, including Ken McElroy with his 40% housing crash call. Um, so again, if he, it, it, when you appreciate it, understand that inflation is a feature, not a bug, you can use inflation to get rich. That's simple to me, man. It's just that simple. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, I think that's a large part of it. I mean, I think that, you know, I've I've seen a lot of different calculators out there that show increase in rents guaranteed every year and increase in value guaranteed every year and cash flow increase every single year. And sorry, I disagree with that model. I think that you can't bank on that to run a good business. You can't be banking on those things. Oh, you should, you should be buying with that in mind. No, pre no, no, nope. not at all. Listen, all of that stuff becomes the bonus. I want to see an asset that cash flows and then the unintended uh, you know, value play there is that I see a return on the assets value. But a lot of times when you're looking at, you know, Zub, we are going to see so many people in the next three years be stuck in deals because they can't get out of them because they're upside down sure. and they're not upside down because of the value of when they bought the property. They're going to be upside down because they overpaid to do a creative finance deal. And so they paid 1.2 or 1.3 instead of a million. And now they're upside down. They're like, well, but they still have this really decent rate. That's great. But now you can't refi it with the bank because it's so underwater. Or you're with that, you know, you're with that seller finance. And then they come to you and they say, we got to figure something out because this isn't going to work for me anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, or sub two where it's like, you know, light dawns on marble head for Grant Cardone. And Pace acts like there's zero risk to it. Zero, none, nada. 
there is risk. And so if you're conservative in how you underwrite a deal, it's going to take you 10 years. Yeah. It's going to take you 10 years. Just be conservative, be consistent, be concise. And if you get a big boom and you got into a market that doubles in value in five years, awesome. That's a huge win. Mm -hmm. However, it cannot be calculated for. Yeah. Dion, what closing thoughts? So the normal path for most people is to work more than 40 hours a week for more than 40 years to retire in less than 40% of what they were making. We present a solution to not have to do the 40, 40, 40. And we say 10. And the response is, no, I need, I need it faster than that. Yeah, I want two years. I want three years. I want right now. Or they go, oh, that's totally fine for you because you started 10 years ago. Well, of course, that's how that works. Yes. You are going to be alive in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Start investing like it now. Yeah, Agreed. very cool. Uh, Matt, where can people find you? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and Instagram and 1130 AM Sundays. We do our live streams for 90 minutes, wow. taking all questions. Dion, where, uh, where can people find you? Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom, where I'm going to be doing live streams Saturdays and Tuesdays. Wow. Doubling up. I like it. All right, Got guys, free time. <laughs> follow us uh, one rental at a time. Like, subscribe, comment. Also check out the boys, Dion Talk and the Lumberjack Landlord. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Ciao. Mike.